final time. Once again, photo finish here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Will it be Tim Hogan? It's going to be Christopher the Mary at the line. is a presentation of the iRacing Esports Network. season marks a new beginning. New heights will be reached. New records will be broken. A new champion will be crowned. Commitment. Excitement. This is Lionheart. You're watching the premier American Open Wheel Series on iRacing. The Lionheart IndyCar Series presented by First Medical Equipment starts now. Under a cloud-cluttered granite state sky, the grueling end of the season schedule continues for the Lionheart IndyCar Series presented by First Medical Equipment as this afternoon we travel north up to New Hampshire Motor Speedway for the Skidmark Motorsports 200. It's round 19 of 24 on the season six schedule and all the action from green flag to victory donuts can be seen live as it happens right here on the Global Sim Racing Channel via the iRacing Esports Network. And everyone watching on IESN, hello and welcome to another GSRC broadcast and the countdown to green presented by The Sim Pit. As cyberspace flows into your place over the next 15 minutes, GSRC will bring you all the storylines, all the stats and facts. You'll need to appreciate the Skidmark Motorsports 200 that follows immediately as we count down to green. I'm Bill Soupson, sharing the microphone with former real-world IndyCar driver Richie Hearn. Um, Jed Yaman has director duties armed with cameras, locked and loaded by Dougie Beard. Now, last time out at Iowa, chaos reigned supreme, and the championship contenders couldn't decide who was going to give it away first. After eight different leaders and 20 lead changes, in the end, Adam Blocker was able to fend off Michael Goodman to win by a mere three one hundredths of a second. For this round, the Lionheart boys stay on an oval. Richie, tell us a little bit about a track you know, New Hampshire. Thanks, Soup. And folks, before I talk about the track, let me remind you that everything during the Countdown to Green comes courtesy of its sponsor, The Sim Pit. 
The Sim Pits and Entertainment Channel dedicated to sim racing. It focuses to bring you news, reviews, and information from around the world about sim racing hardware and software. It also focuses on what it takes to be a better sim racer with instructional video and the how-tos that'll help your performance on the virtual track. Check it out, check it out at thesimpit.com. And speaking of virtual tracks, let's talk about today's venue. And here we are, New Hampshire Motor Speedway, a place I know very well. Speedway is a 1.058 mile oval speedway located in Loudoun, New Hampshire, nicknamed the Magic Mile. The straights are 65 feet wide with very little banking, one degree banking, 1500 feet long. And the turns are 65 degrees wide with not very much banking to that, two to seven degrees variable. Loudon game a spot on the NASCAR Cup Series in 1993. Rusty Wallace won the inaugural Slick, Slick 50 300 in July of that year. The track also hosted open wheel racing for seven years, hosting CARP from 92 to 95, then the Indy Racing League from 96 to 98, which I had the pole for in 1996. The track is really good for side-by-side -side racing, and there will be two grooves to race on. It's very fast, but very flat in the corners, but you can make those outside passes work if you're brave enough. But the best way to get an idea of what this place is really like, let's jump on board that GSRC car and take a lap. Hello everyone, welcome to the Global Sim Racing Channel. I'm Brian Yazik, taking you for a spin around the New Hampshire Motor Speedway in the GSRC IR18 IndyCar. Without further ado, here we go around the Magic Mile, as it is so affectionately called. Hot lapping, you're gonna wanna try to get in, take a wide entry, and then bring it all the way down to that, just about that bottom stripe right there. Get any lower than that, there's actually a change in the banking that will just spin your car right out like a top. Three and four, same thing. Take a wider entry, find that almost bottom seam, let it rotate around and then drive it right off of the corner. Now, Loud's not really known for multi-groove racing, but in these cars, in the search for clean air, you could see guys hover right up above that gray, kind of in that darker gray. See if they can get some bite off of the corner. It might work, it might not. As the race plays out, we will see. Down at turns three and four, not gonna see too much. You're gonna see him kind of maybe up a lane or so, and then try and take a late entry and diamond off and hope that the guy in front of you has his issues up four across the line. That's going to complete our guide here around New Hampshire Motor Speedway. I'm Brian Yazik. Enjoy the show. Was that magical for you? A lap around New Hampshire. Now let me sprinkle a little fairy dust on the point standings as we take a look at those. We're going to start by looking at the driver standings presented by First Medical Equipment. Well, not a lot of change in the top two. It's Adam Blocker and Andrew have a catch Kinsella. That gap is 53. Remember that these totals take into account the uh, three drop races allowed for in the rules. Dandy Dan Guerin is celebrating his 100th Lionheart IndyCar start today. He sits in third. As you get to the end of the seasons, you don't see a lot of big movers or droppers, but there is one guy we should take a look at. How about in 14th position? Welcome to the overlay for the first time this season. It is Samuel Ryman racing there, the number 63 machine. Coming off his best result, his first top 10 of the season. He came home ninth in Iowa. All right, let's go ahead and drop down and take a look at the Lionheart IndyCar Series 2018 team standings. And, of course, these are presented by the guys that are giving away some great equipment, HPP simulation. Hey, look at that. Synergy Motorsports won the day in Iowa, and that was enough to move them around no-name racing. So, finally, we have a little action going on near the top of it. Of course, adrenaline racing way out in front with Blocker, Branch, Kinsella, Shawin, and Stouffer crushing as they have a 417-point lead over the rest of the guys. How about a little farther back? Dragonfly up a spot. Eight ball racing moves down a spot. Despite Michael Goodman's second place finish, eight ball, you can see a little bit under, under man down there with only uh, Goodman and Weaver doing the work down there. All right, with the team championship done, let's go ahead and turn it over to Richie. Talk about those rookies. Yeah, and these rookie standings are presented by Butt Kicker. Well, the battle for the top spot has swapped positions almost every race. Not the last one, but it is very tight with Larkamp leaving, leading and Weaver just three points behind. They got a big gap to the group and to third place, which is Samuel Ryman still holding on to that third position with a strong finish last week, and he's got Beard right on his tail. The only position changes happening in the 13th, 14th, and 15th spots as Cohen and Harrington jumping past Karam. 
Yeah, Connor Harrington making his debut here and has been very impressive down there. Look for him to move up those rookie standings here in the last few races as he should score some big points. All right, now let's go ahead and remember that this is the premier fixed setup racing league for the Dallara IR18 on the iRacing service, and the Lionheart IndyCar Series honors the memory of the late Dan Weldon. The lead in to tonight's setup corner comes courtesy of Billy Joel. You have to learn to pace yourself. Pressure. You're just like everyone else. Pressure. You've only had to run so far so good, but you will come to a place where only things you feel are loaded guns in your face and you'll have to deal with. That's right, pressure. Professor Lugnut, tell us about pressure. Soup, Billy Joel was singing about a different kind of pressure there. I'm going to talk about how tire pressure are one of the most important aspects of the car as they dramatically affect how a car handles. There are two aspects of the tire pressure that impacts the car, the sidewall and the tread. Increasing the tire pressure leads to more rigid sidewall this effectively changes the spring rate in the dynamic camber of the tire because it's less flexible. At the same time, tire pressure impacts the tread of the tire. Decreasing the tire pressure heats up the outside and inside of the tire, while increasing the tire pressure heats up the middle of the tire. This is because just like when you fill up a balloon, as the tire gets more air in it, it becomes more round. So what do these effects all add up to? Well, a lower tire pressure will tend to have more grip, but will also heat up quicker and degrade faster. A higher tire pressure will have less grip in general, but will last longer and operate at a lower temperature. But this isn't always true. Due to other setup factors, this can sometimes run contrary to the convention. Setting the tire pressure is often the final step in a difficult setup practice. I understood everything you just said. Now, what you just said may not have been as catchy as Billy Joel, but man, it was way more informative. Thank you for that. No pressure when it comes to talking about the race details. Richie, try it one more time. Yeah, and these details come to us thanks to the Sim Pit. And here we are, Season 6 of the Lionheart IndyCar Series. As we said, we're running Round 19 of a long season of 24. Three driver drops available. We're running, the obviously, the new Delara IR18. The setups are fixed but are adjusted, and they're working on cash and pricing, so, so totaling $6,402. And that is perfect timing as we have ran all the videos. We've talked about the track, gone over the points, talked about the series details, just in time to go to qualifying. So let's see who's going to get out there. Richie, I got to think that this is a track where qualifying is going to be kind of important. Well, any oval except for maybe the super speedways is important because, uh, you know, there's a lot of cars out here today. You don't want to get caught up in the mess. Also, that arrow wash, which we have talked about before, becomes really tricky as you get, you know, five, six, seven, ten rows deep. So uh, you definitely want to start, start up front. But, um, you know, Andrew Kinsella has done very well. He has not qualified well lately, but he has always been made his way up to the front. I'm sure he's looking for a little bit better starting spot this time. A lot of cars indeed. There were 37 names on the entry list. Not sure if all of those are going to race today. I'm kind of hoping some of them were just out having some fun or maybe going to be up in the stewards booth. Right now, Pierre Knight and Dagla is the first guy to put in a qualifying time. He sits in there, puts in a 21.9. Bart Workman comes around behind her, 21.95. As you're watching on our screen, the qualifying, you can see the line they're taking. Um, they're not going right down to the, to the yellow line. So the faster line is actually around the outside. It keeps that momentum up. But when we do get to the race, you'll see people right down there on the bottom, but it tends to pinch the car off a little bit. So, um, you know, we're going to see some good racing, but as far as qualifying goes, you want to go right up to about that third groove and keep those RPMs up. So, Richie, let me ask you a real-world racing question. I got to assume that winning pole must come with some type of hardware, yes? Yeah, like I said, I qualified on the pole here in real life in 96. I have the trophy to prove it. Um, I was just moving and I actually found it in a box. So I think I'll <laughs> dust dust it off and I will maybe take a picture of it and send it to you guys just to prove that I did do it one time. Oh, man. I had visions of this elegant gold encrusted trophy. No. Case. Let's find out it's in the box. All right. No, it's just a t trophy with an eagle on top of it. So nothing to uh, to sell on eBay or anything. Well, Justin Weaver looking for one of those right now as he puts in a 21.736. Yeah, Dick's machine up in front. 
Yeah, and these times are tight, too, as you see 21-7 for pole at the moment, 7-3, 7-4, 7-4, 8-7-6. So um, it's going to be the tiniest differences of getting that line just correct. They only get two laps. So, um, you know, it's really tricky to get those tires up to, to speed right away. So this is going to be interesting. We'll talk about the race analysis a little bit later, but I'll just tell you that we are going with 190 laps today. That's 200 miles. I don't know how you can call a track the Miracle Mile when it's apparently, I guess it would be a little more than a mile around. I guess it depends on where they measure yeah. it, I take it, since the track is 65 feet wide. You're right. I guess the circumference uh, could be a little bit different depending how they mark. We're looking there at Stefan Larkamp. Leads the rookies by three points right now. Yeah, he leads the rookies, but he's only sitting ninth on the grid, and his uh, his protagonist is sitting on the pole, so he's got a little work to do. He's not too far off, but he's definitely got a few spots to make up. There's Brian Beard. Of course, Larkamp's forte is the, the twisty circuits. Justin Weaver, probably a little bit better on the ovals, but... They're both competitive wherever they race. There's Adam Blocker, your current point leader in that Dodger Blue machine. Yeah, and he uh, he is he got really lucky at the last race because he was not running well. And then we had that yellow flag that put a bunch of people a lap down. So he definitely stole some points that uh, that race at Iowa. There are 27 drivers that put in qualifying times. Adam Blocker is not one of them, but that's going to change right now. And nope, he's still on. Yeah, there he gets his time. Locker goes up into 12th. I imagine he's probably looking for something a little bit better than that. Yeah, and he's sitting right on the same row as his uh, his competitor for the championship. Uh, Andrew Kinsella is right behind him, just about uh, one-tenth of a second behind him. There's Brian Yazik. Iowa gave him an early exit, so he was kind enough to come in and sit with us in the commentator's booth for about the first half of the race last time. I really enjoyed that, Bryant. Right now, you've got yourself just inside the top 10. 29 drivers have put in qualifying times. There are still, ooh, a good nine drivers who have not. And qualifying is done. And remember, when it is time to go racing, which is gonna happen in a minute, Nothing beats the feel of a true hydraulic braking system from HPP Simulations, designed and manufactured in the USA on state-of-the-art CNC equipment, HPP's hydraulic pedals, and their accessories set the standard for simulation racing. For more information, please visit hppsimulations.com. All right, let's go to the HPP starting grid right now. On the front row, Richie, it is indeed Justin Weaver inside of Joe Branch. All right, right behind them will be Chris Lanini. Good spot for him. And James Krahula, great qualifying in fourth. The Candyman in fifth inside of Dandy Dan Garen. Row four will be Michael Goodman and Connor Harrington. Chris Dofer and Brian Yasuko, ninth and tenth. Next up is going to be Stephen Larkamp in that 11th position. Right next to him will be Isaiah Dupree. The other spot is Adam Blocker. He's going to be flanked by Andrew Kinsella, the two Betwight leaders, 13th and 14th. Row 8 will consist of Scott Bolster and Pierre Daigle. In 17th, it is Matthew Mercer. He's going to be cited by Brian Beard. Row 10 is going to be Bart Ortman and Brandon Limkerman. Hitting blackjack, it's Adam. Ian Adams. Good job on that one, Richie. Scott Johnson in the double duck spot. Row 12 is going to be Joe Flanagan and Ron Hacker. George Anzaldo in the quarter century mark inside of Samuel Ryman coming off that ninth place result. Row 13 will be George Anzaldo and Samuel Ryman. Ryman had a good race last time. He's 29th. He's flanked by Tony Shawan in 30th. Coming up in 31st spot is going to be Mark Cohen and Bob Micus in 32nd. None of these guys put in qualifying times. Jack Bogan and Brian is not easy being Greenley. 33rd and 34th. Peter Edwins, Tyler Groff, and Mitchell Muller round out the field. We do have a couple of penalties I like to point out. And uh, Bob Micus and Brian Greenlee were given end-of-line penalties. Oh, that's, I'm sure they're disappointed about that, but I'm sure it was well-deserved, and they're going to serve it happily and have a good result. All right, as they start to roll, let's go ahead and look at our onboard cameras now. First one up, we're going to have Dylan McKenna. He's going to be in the HPP onboard camera machine. But wait, we got another one. 
There's Brian Yazik. He's in another HVP camera as well. And then, of course, the third one is uh, Scotty Johnson in the Skid Mark Motorsports onboard camera number 07. We'll keep an eye on him. All right, they are rolling on the back stretch. I would assume that we're just going to have one pace lap here today, as this is a mile and a tad, a mile and a pinch, a mile and a scotch. So let's watch our beautiful pace car driver. She pulls it off. Nice job. You know what to do. Yeah, they're at the chicken steak. Cover me on the cows because the horses are once again out of the barn. It's not a horse, it's a whale. It's the Moby Dickies machine. Leads them down into the first corner. Joe Branch in second. James Carhula. Look at this. Chris Lanini in that Florism Blue Machine. Getting passed for fourth place by Dandy Dan Garrett. Yeah, everybody's bunched up there. Justin Weaver got a great start just being out by himself, but right behind them, Joe Branch and everybody else stacked up, but everybody's doing a good job. Nice, clean first lap here. Pink, pink is what's going on in this October. James Grahula in third. Garen secures fourth. My goodness, Lelini is stuck on the inside. Get him freight trained on the top side as Connor Harrington, the rookie, goes around him. Yeah, Connor Herring was on the pole for Iowa and had a really good race, got caught up on that yellow flag, so I'm expecting him to be up front all day here. There's single file up front as Weaver begins to pull away. The action is back in sixth position. That's Lanini and that fluorescent blue machine underneath. Harrington gets around him, and now here comes Brian Yazik in the familiar HPP colors. He's going to get some momentum on the top side. He gets into six. Can Lanini finally duck into seventh? He does. And you can see that two wide racing, like I talked about, is coming into play. These guys are able to run two and three wide pretty cleanly. The key is that if you run below the, the car in front of you, you get that front wing in the clean air so you can carry that momentum, but it does scrub the tires. So it's kind of a fine balance there as we come onto the front straightaway and everybody's scrambling for positions. Looking as we ride on board with Andrew, have a catch Kinsella, looking up what's going on in front of him. My gosh. Where to put the car? The ones that are side by side down low, that is Lanini up top in the fluorescent car. Dustin Wardlow, the candy man, tries to get down in there. Cannot make it stick. Lanini will have momentum on the top side, and he's gonna bring with him Chris Stouffer. Yeah, Chris Lanini's doing a good job holding off this pack. He's kind of running right down through the middle of the groove. And those guys are looking for a spot, either high or low, but they can't quite get it done. And it's kind of stacking up everybody behind him. That's where the action is. Now, this report that the front five all race in normal position. One, two, three, four, five. Harrington with a little bit of a gap, trying to get up to Garen. We'll keep an eye on them. They're pretty settled up there. The action is back here. There you can see as they come underneath you. Look how they're too wide. Back in ninth position. I think as we see, we get a little bit farther in this run. It's going to single file a little bit as those tires wear out. But they are pretty racy right now. We've got some big movers. So far as Brian Yazik from 10th to 6th, Isaiah Dupree got a great start from 12th to 7th. Chris Lanini started 3rd, but he faded pretty quickly, but he's doing a good job holding off to that 8th eight position. And we have a car. A solo spin, I think, from Peter Edwins. Oh my goodness, and then he didn't put the brakes on. This is, believe it or not, right in front of Justin Weaver as he's the last car. Now watch this, and he just lets it roll up into the wall, and here comes your leader going by right there. That's it's probably a good thing he didn't step on the brake because Justin was committed to that line, so um, Justin should thank him for rolling back into the wall, but uh, he's going to have some damage to fix. That's a really good point, Richie. I didn't think of that. Yeah, if he would have put the brakes on to save the car, he would have been right in the racing line in the front of the leaders. Well, so, we got eight laps in, and is it time for pit stops? It looks like uh, our leader's coming in. Oh, my goodness, but... He's, he's coming in when solo. When you're out in front, you don't know. I know Andrew Kinsella's Not coming in, so, you know, I would do anything Andrew does. He's one of the smartest drivers out there, so Andrew and Justin Weaver are kind of on their own. You got a few guys in the back coming in, but, man, the meat of that pack at the beginning uh, in the front part is staying out, so... We'll really see how this plays out if we go a long green flag run. 
looks to me like 26 car, 20, 25 cars stay out. So poor, poor Kinsella and Weaver. They are going to be at the back of the train, but they'll be feeling good with fresh rubber. Yeah, we'll see. You know, I mean, uh, it's pretty early on. So unless you get caught up in a wreck, you're you're opening up your windows a little bit that way. So it's not always a bad thing. Um, you know, they have more options as we get a little farther into the race. Let's go ahead and look at the race analysis if we can, as Joe Branch is our leader. So how far are we going? And indeed, we are going that 190 laps. That equals 200 miles. You do the math. I can't figure it out. We talked about it. It's all about circumference. Now, the maximum fuel stint, 52. 52 gets you to 190. We're thinking there's going to be three stops, four different segments. And then, of course, your incidents on a Volvo. Eight, you lose three points. Twelve, and you are DQ'd. So, yeah, as we're working lap 10, you know, those those guys that pitted have now extended that pit stop window to lap 62, if not a little bit more. So, um, you know, I haven't practiced here with these guys, so I don't know quite what the tire wear is like. But uh, I'm assuming the tire wear is pretty high. So, um, you know, I think these guys are uh, made the right choice. I mean, uh, I'm sure when Justin pulled in, he was probably looking at his mirror and we see everybody else not going in. Then you're kind of on an island. But um, unless he gets caught up in a wreck, uh, I think he uh, he's in a good spot. S same with Andrew. like to talk about our hard charger. And to do that, we got to go all the way back to 24th position. And that's going to be Tyler Graff. Uh, again, we'll, we'll give him a little love for what he's done, but again, he did not put in a qualifying time. He's picked up 12 spots from 36th. Yeah, I was watching a little bit some of these guys qualifying, and a lot of them were crashing, trying to get up to speed. So he might have tried and just, just couldn't uh, get a clean lap in. The leader, Justin Weaver, does cycle out in 23rd position. Just ahead of Graf. I'm not sure how that actually happened to Tyler. Maybe Tyler came in for a stop. I'll have to double check on that. Yeah, he did not. So somehow, maybe Weaver was so far in front that he was able to come in and get out in time. Nevertheless, Weaver sits in 23rd. The other dry who pitted is Kinsella. And he's way back in 27th. The lights should be going off the pace car at this time round, so they'll have... No, the pace car's going in. We're going green. Caught me by surprise. Let's go ahead and give attention to Joe Branch as he's working lap number 13. He's being chased by James Grahula, Dandy Dan Guerin making his 100th Lionheart IndyCar Series start tonight in that pink machine. Connor Harrington, the rookie, in fourth, being challenged underneath by Brian Yazik. Yazik thinks better of it. Yeah, Brian's had a good run here at the beginning, starting 10th up to 5th. And so he's on a tear. He had a bad race last week, so I'm sure he's looking to make that up. Dan Guerin's also been on a good string of finishes as well. Oh, we got a caution out. I'm going to see if we can find it. I I don't know who it is. Our, our director thinks it's uh, Bart Workman. Well, it is. Here's Bart. We're gonna. That might have been it right there. It might have been enough. Let's see what happened to Bart. I couldn't find it, so I'm watching it with you for the first time. Yeah, it looked like he kind of got hit from behind, or he hit somebody and then hit the wheel wall, and then looked like his steering was just not working correctly, and and just kind of washed it up in the wall, and just finally just took a tow. And again, no fast repairs here in the Lionheart IndyCar Series. Yeah, it looked like he ran into the back of his teammate as well. So, um, yeah, that's unfortunate for Bart. So he's in the pits and hoping to get that thing fixed and get back out. The single file restart was a lot more tame than what we started to start the race. They just got into single file right away. Yeah, well, we're getting a little deeper into the run. The tires aren't as good, so they're not going to be able to dive down to the bottom. Also, um, you know, they have a long ways to go. So, um, you know, just be patient. Don't get crazy and try to sort it out as we get closer to the end. Justin Weaver started the green flag run in 23rd. He now races in 19th. 
We did see Brandon Limpkerman come in, and uh, he's going to top off, get some tires. Leaders are all going to stay out. Try to keep an eye on Justin Weaver and Andrew Kinsella as they were the early stoppers on that last one. And they're currently 20th and 23rd, respectively. The top 18 have yet to pit. Now, Justin yeah. Weaver, although Justin Weaver, I guess, I guess Justin's in 19th now is where they're showing. Yeah, I think that as he went around the and uh, Brandon had pitted, so they passed okay. him. So, you know, a couple of battles to watch. Like, we're going to bring this up. But, uh, you know, the, tight, the battle for the championship is tight between Andrew and... Um, Adam, but also that rookie of the year battle, they get some great prizes for that as well. So, you know, Justin and Steven Larkamp just kind of keep an eye on that as we get through this race. And we talked about all the prizes and, and cash and prize money that goes out for this series. It is very impressive. Some very cool prizes as well. Larkamp sits in 11th, and Weaver back in 19th, but of course. The Moby Dickey machine in 19th has pitted. Yeah, I mean, there's two ways to look at it. You can either be really aggressive like Justin and uh, um, at Andrew had done or just be conservative. Just kind of go with status quo and just kind of see how it plays out. It just depends on how aggressive you want to be. Obviously, the person who's usually the most aggressive on us is James Krahula, but he qualified well, so he's sticking to the front area for second place at the moment. Yeah, Kahula uses that contrarian attitude when he's really not up front. Yeah, he'll, he'll play it close to the vest here as the lights go off the pace car. So one more time around, and we'll be going green. They're working lap 18 under yellow. will be 19 when they race in anger. Love to get a shout-out to that Joe Branch paint job. That just reminds me of, you know, as Mario and Michael and Andretti. Mario was already always one of my heroes growing up, so... It's great to see him run that black Havoline Texaco colors. He's even got the, the Andretti paint job on his helmet as well, so that's very cool. Yeah, the car feels fast. All right, let's see if we can get in a nice green flag run here. Get some miles in. Round number 19 of 24 on your schedule. Getting close to the end. Pace car peels and so does the roar of the engine. Joe Branch, James Grujula, Dandy Dan Garrett. Oh my goodness, look at this guy making a move underneath. That is Chris Stouffer. Stouffer gets underneath Brian Yazik to move up into fifth. Yeah, everybody's getting real aggressive right at the start here. We got Dan Guerin, Connor Harrington, Brian Gazik all stacked up with everybody else behind him. Dan Guerin's doing a good job kind of holding that spot. Gazik wants that spot back, but does not take it. Now moving, looking on the inside. Oh, he gets really loose. He has it back out. That is the Candyman. Dustin Wardlow, we have another caution. It is Scott Bolster. Bolster got tipped by Scott Johnson. Great Scott here as the two get together. Yeah, he just dives down the inside, and, and I mean, you got to make the turn at some point. So the guy on the top side started to turn in. The guy on the low side didn't, and that's the result right there. So kind of unnecessary, but uh, happened nonetheless. So here we are, Scott Johnson. Get, he's got the draft, but he's got to turn in at some point. And he doesn't, and that's the end result. So well, unfortunately, we're on our third yellow. I have an opinion. That was clearly Scott's fault. So, Scott, shame on you. See how I did that there? Yeah, I saw you. Yeah, okay. you, 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 100% success rate. <laughs> well, we are under yellow again. Get these out of the way. Yeah, and sometimes it takes this. You know, we have this many cars, and... You know, these guys out there are excited to run. It takes a little bit to sort out, and you just got to deal with it. Still none of the leaders coming into the pit, so they're going to hang in there, I think, for that full run. So uh, we'll see how that plays out as we get deeper into this race.
Just let the viewers know not to worry. I am completely versed. I have a deep repertoire in Broadway show tunes. I can get into that if these yellows continue. So you won't want to miss that. What's going on up front? That's George Brant Joe uh sorry, Joe Branch, James Grahula, Dan Guerin. Now Connor Harrington is up four spots. He started in eighth. He's a rookie. He's getting a feel for this series. Watch out for him. Chris Stouffer made an aggressive move when we went green last time. He is in fifth. Yasek lost a few positions. Still up four, though. Back in seventh, Chris Lanini. He's just taking it easy. Qualified third, trying to stay out of trouble. Yeah, I think Candyman, Chris... likewise. I was going to say, Chris, I think he just got swallowed up on that first star, a little overwhelmed, but he's holding steady now, and, and he's doing fine, but it was uh, at the at the start, everybody was really aggressive. Just behind him is the candy man, Dustin Wardlow. Then the guy who almost stole a win last week, he did his very best to get around uh, Adam Blocker, and of course we're talking about Michael Goodman. He had to settle for second, but put on quite a show. Ratting out your top ten. Well, there's the guy that nipped him. Adam Blocker, your points leader. As for the lights are still on the pace car, so we're going around one more time. Let's give us an opportunity to talk about one of our sponsors. Let's go ahead and talk about something that's near and dear to my heart, and that is, of course, Butt Kicker. And I'll tell you all about them as soon as I... That says about them. So I, I'm told not to ad lib. See, in the old days, I would have just ad libbed this, but I know better. So, the Git Hammer Company is the maker of low frequency products, better known as Butt Kicker. Butt Kicker products add an instant immersion to any game. Unlike a subwoofer that moves air and loses accuracy and force, Butt Kicker products move actual mass, producing haptic immersion that's powerful and accurate. Butt Kicker products add that missing driver to car connection, bringing more realism and immersion to your session. See all the family of products of the Butt Kicker at thebuttkicker.com. Use the promo code LION20 to get 20% off your order. The lights are out. The plug is red. We are working lap 24. They're going to be going, working lap 25 under green as they come around this time. Once again, the beautiful Medita Mendez pulls the car off into pit lane, turning it over to Joe Branch. Branch, Krahula, Garrett, Harrington, Stouffer, your top five. Single file. Yeah, everybody's doing a good job single file, but Chris Stouffer has been pushing Con and Harrington pretty hard. He's got Brian Yazik right behind him. So this battle for that fourth spot is heating up. You see them fan out a little bit farther back. That was uh, Scott Johnson. Apparently his car's still feeling good as he got around underneath Dylan McKenna. McKenna fighting back. Those are the two cars going side by side, beginning that hornet's nest. The car looking on behind them, that is George Enzaldo. Oh, way up in the dust is McKenna. He's gonna lose lots of positions. One to Enzaldo, one to Johnson. Ooh, we got a pass for Brian Yazik and Christopher got very close to each other. Brian dove on the inside, and they almost touch, but they kind of go back to single file. But Brian's looking real racy here at the beginning. He's really wanting to get by uh, Connor Harrington. Or oh, it's Chris Stouffer, sorry. Yeah. Their cars are very similar, um, and uh, he's he's in a hurry. He started ninth or started 10th up to 6th, but he's in a hurry to get to the front. The top four all equally spaced. Not a lot going on up there. They are just a... Uh racing right now behind each other. We'll keep an eye on them. Some of them are making a peek. The action is back here in fifth. Stouffer, Yazik, and the Candyman, Dustin Wardlow. And they dive into turn one, single file, but spread out a little bit. Looks like Brian's trying to get a run because he goes a little bit high to try to get some air, and he's going to dive to the inside as we're watching on board right in front of these guys, right in front of our driver right there. Ooh, he's not going to quit, get it, but he's going to have to give it up to basically Dustin Wardlow. 
Wardlow gets underneath, but look at the drive up top from Yasek. He's got those HPP pedals. He's got that HPP sponsor. Now look at P2. Don't be fooled by this. What they do is when they get to the corner, they kind of fan out a little bit, but I think that Garen's got a shot at it as they go too wide into one. Yeah, James is trying to take that. Oh, caution's out. Brian, it's not easy being Greenlee loose of the car. It's a big one. He gets Brian Beard. Take a look at this one. Ah, uh, looks he just lost it on his own, down, try, trying to run down low. You got to really pinch it off to get down there, and you really kind of lose some grip. And if you try to get on the gas a little too hard, you're going to spin those rear tires. And you know, unfortunately, Brian had Brian Beard had nowhere to go, and it just really destroys his car, as you can see right there. So unfortunate for both those guys. Just kind of. And Brandon Lipkeman is the third car to the scene that also has nowhere to go. Watch Lipkeman here. So there's the spin. He gets Beard and poor Lipkeman. Yeah, unfortunately, three cars out of the race. And we come back live. We'll stay with you here. And after pit stops, then we'll take a short break. Yeah, all the leaders are coming in. Now, that fluorescent blue machine, that... Was that uh, Chris Lanini staying out, I'm going to guess? Yep. Yeah, yeah Chris Lanini, and this is going to move up Justin Weaver and Andrew Cancelo took that early stop, so it's going to work out for them at the moment. So I'm looking at that as the, as the leaders will come out of pit lane. The two cars that have yet to pit, Chris Lanini and Michael Goodman, they are working 32 laps on that set of tires. Then go another 20. They're probably thinking another... Another caution is going to come here pretty soon. The leaders of all those guys that are coming out right now, that pit stop. I'll give you that who was out first here. Well, I can't really tell you. We'll give you that when we come back from break. We're going to take a short break. Don't go far. SimPit is an entertainment channel dedicated to the world of simulated motorsports. The SimPit is a leader in providing the sim racing community with news, reviews, interviews, DIY pieces, and instructional videos to make sim racing a better experience for all. Check us out at thesimpit.com or go to YouTube and just search for The SimPit. Welcome back to the Global Sim Racing Channel. We're about to go green. Pace car is in. And it is Michael Goodman, the only driver who decided to stay out. He's working a 35-lap stint. 
He's your leader. The Candyman, or I'm sorry, just Justin Weaver, the early leader, took that pit stop early. He finds himself up in second now. He's got nine lap fresher tires on his car. Andrew Kinsella, the same. Tyler Graff, get to pit in fifth. Big Joe Hazard, back there in fifth. I apologize, Graff in fourth. Yeah, we got some guys in the back. back. Yeah, I was going to say, some guys trying to make some moves back there. Dan Guerin making a great move on, looks like, uh, Joe Branch as he dove to the inside of uh, turn one and two as they come onto the front stretch here. Joe Branch was the leader before that pit stop. He now finds himself in eighth and being challenged by Connor Harrington. As we ride on board with Tyler Graff, looking back at the two guys that are coming. Yep, Brian, yep Brian Yazik. He's, uh, he's been pretty aggressive here, so he's really working the low side here on some of these guys, and he's in a hurry to get up the front. He had a bad race last week, so I'm, I'm sure he's looking for a better result. Garen made a shot at Krahula, could not get it done. All this going on behind Michael Goodman. Yeah, and Michael's doing a good job. Oh. Yeah, I was gonna say, he's doing a good job. He's been 40 laps. He hasn't pitted yet. Justin Weaver and Andrew Kinsella are working 10 laps earlier or, saw, or later tires. So um, I would have thought those guys would have swallowed him up. But uh, Michael's got a good a good feel for this car. He's running a really good line. You can see Andrew running that really high line, trying to find anywhere to get some clean air on that car. Yeah, I think Michael Goodman enjoying that clean air. I was noticing the leaders up front as they would go into the corners, they would kind of stagger. Boy, my goodness, as Justin Weaver almost gets in the wall. They'd stagger going into the corner so that they had clean air on the front. Yeah, Justin Weaver really got very close to the wall coming at it, too. So uh, probably a little bit of a pucker moment. That's brought Andrew Kinsella right up behind him. We're riding on board right there for a minute. And here comes Andrew trying to look for the outside. Just getting some air, get a good run off of two. And you can see Justin Weaver, he's just going to let him go. Wow, yep. that was that was interesting. Indeed, that was a surrender. That was a surrender. He said, I don't need this right now, so you go, Chase Michael. Oh, Connor Harrington loses it right in front of the entire field. And nobody gets him. Unbelievable. This might be a fun onboard from Harrington as he watches the entire field come at him. A little bit of contact, perhaps, with that car. We'll double check. Watch this as he's facing everybody coming. Yeah, everybody did a great job just missing him. But yeah, it looked like he got a little bit of contact going into the corner right here. Connor Harrington on board and he just gets a little contact, gets spun and gets hit again, but stops the car and here he goes. He's watching everybody woo, foo, foo, go by him. So uh, great job by the rest of the field for missing him. That was the Candyman, Dustin Wardlow. The man got a piece of him. Yeah, you can see how much he's turning in the wheel right there. He's got a little bit of understeer. It's not, it wasn't done on purpose, just ran out of grip there and just unfortunate that Connor was still on the outside. Well, with that, I gotta think Michael Goodman's gonna have to come in and he may be lonely in there. Yeah, he's gonna come in with his buddy, Tyler Graff. Those are the guys who have yet to pit. Gets a few more takers. The Candyman comes in. Dustin Wardle may be needing to see we get a little Repairs done to the front after that contact. Chris Stouffer, Adam Blocker. Oh, we got a lot of guys coming in. And that's going to put our driver in second place in the championship up point. His uh, competitor, Adam Blocker, is sitting down in 14th, although he's on a little different pit strategy. Justin Weaver also going to be second place. And uh, those guys are, we'll see if those guys work together. It was interesting to see Justin kind of give that spot up to Andrew. So we'll see how that, uh, if they work together here when we get going. Well, with another yellow flag, this will give me an opportunity to talk to one of the sponsors that have been around with the Lionheart IndyCar Series for a long time. They are indeed our title sponsor. And of course, I'm talking about the guys at First Medical Equipment. They've been the source of medical supplies and equipment in the Burlington, Iowa area for years 
because of their superior commitment to provide the absolute best in product quality and customer service. We thank them for their support. They are a wonderful sponsor indeed. All right, Richie, let's talk a little world New Hampshire. I know that you were quick here on the poll, but I know this uh, track also uh, it's not always pleasant memories for you. No, I had one of my biggest wrecks ever there, was, but no one saw it because it was a Goodyear tire test. But, uh, you know, in 96, when I qualified the poll, I, I, I could have won this race, but we had a red flag. And I can't, I think it was because it was raining. And unfortunately, when I came in, my uh, car over uh, overheated and uh, and I was able to continue. But uh, this is a really good track. It takes a lot of commitment to go into those corners flat out and uh, just try to hold that high line. Um, but I do have good memories of this place. What's on great racing, but maybe they just don't uh, get the crowd participation. That's my guess. Yeah, you know, I mean, it used to be a great place when Cart ran there and then when the split happened in 96 it kind of fractured the the fan base there and they just never recovered and um, it's too bad because i think that if they could get a good fan base this is probably one of the best ovals that indy car can run on when the split happened was there animosity between drivers that are racing in different series like the sharks and the jets or for you guys all this one community yeah not so much the drivers i mean we all knew where you had to race where the where the where the job was um, but there was a big fracture with the fan base for sure. I mean, um, you know, I ran in the IRL, but at the last race at Las Vegas, we announced that we were going to go to cart the next year. And, and man, we got hate mail and, <laughs> and like, uh, it's just, you know, it's just weird the way it works out. You just run where, where the sponsors want to put you. You don't really have a choice sometimes. Well, I'm telling you, a guy who doesn't have a choice right now is Andrew Kinsella. He is in front, but he cannot pass a car because that's against the rules to do that to lovely Medina Mendez as she pulls it in. Pace car is in. It's Andrew Kinsella up in front. He got the lead when Justin Weaver just kind of surrendered it to him. So now it is have a catch. Weaver, Rahula, Dandy Dan Garen in his 100th race, and then the battle for fifth. On the top side, it's Yasek underneath Joe Branch. We have not heard much from this guy, and that is Pierre Knight and Degla out there in a familiar 14 car. Looking yeah. to pick up a spot. I was just going to bring that up. Yeah, he just kind of followed, followed Brian Yazik around the outside of Joe Branch. Joe's just kind of stuck down on the bottom and uh, just kind of watching people go around him. He finally moves up into that top groove. I mean, the top groove is the faster way around, but you can't pass somebody if they're running the groove that you want to run, so you got to make a move somehow. They're yep. working lap number 50. As you watch Brian Yaza trying to get around Dan Garen, he's really aggressive. We also got a big stack up behind Joe Branch right now with Steven Larkamp, Scott Johnson, George Anzaldo, all those good drivers really trying to get by Joe for that. Uh, he's holding on to that seventh position, but uh, he's got a lot of company. So then you have the lead, the battle for the, for the guys who stayed out. Michael Goodman came in. He's leading all the cars that pitted. He's racing at 16th position underneath of Mitchell Moeller. Yeah, Andrew Kinsella on the same pit strategy, working uh, lap 43, 42 of their last stop. Right. But uh, Justin Weaver's got some company. He's got James Carrula all over the back of him. He's got about 20 lap fresher tires. So um, we'll see how this plays out. You know, I, like I said, I'm not sure of the tire wear. I don't know if it's a problem or not, but uh, we'll see how it goes out. If we can get a long green flag run. The two guys up in front. And again, it just could be a matter of math, counting, counting back from 190 to see where you need to pit. But Kinsella and Weaver have been out for 43 laps. Then you got a bunch of drivers that have been out for 20 laps, which starts with uh, James Perhula goes all the way down to Mitchell Moeller in a 16th. Then you get down to the guys that just came in. That's Goodman. We got another one, George Anzaldo. Oh, he got a little bit of help from Dylan McKenna. Yeah, they go into the corner here. George Anzaldo taking the low line. 
And Chris, I think, who was that? Chris Lini that went around him, but uh, it got tagged from behind and unfortunately just uh, took him out. Yeah. Lanini went around in the fluorescent blue machine. The good news is for George, as here's the tap from McKenna. Yeah, looks like uh, George wasn't wasn't quite uh, sure about the speed of McKenna, just kind of moved up and McKenna was there, so it's just kind of a racing incident. But here's the good news. He didn't hit anything. Just did a, I think a 720 when it was all totaled up. And he's still out there, racing in 24th right now. So we'll see if Andrew and Justin come in. in. It looks like Justin's kind of fading to come in. Andrew's coming in. So, uh, and it looks like, uh, ooh, James Crujula looked, thought about coming in, but he stayed out. So here's our two rogue uh, rogue guys. Although he's got Brian Yazik, it looks like, coming in behind him. Also Pierre Daigle. So we're going to have a, a healthy group of fast guys on one on one strategy and a healthy group of fast guys on another strategy so yep. this will be interesting actually we got about three strategies going on so you have Krahula that's been out there for about half a stint 23 laps Garen, Branch, Larkamp they're all in the same position Lanini, McKenna then you get back to the guys who came in on that very last stop and of course that's Michael Goodman and Adam Blocker some big names there Big Joe Hazard, Stouffer, Samuel Ryman in that bunch as well and then Justin Weaver and James Krahula, uh, uh, Andrew Kinsella, the guys who just came in, and then they brought a few guys yeah. with them. Yazik and Dingle. I like just like to point out that Justin did beat Andrew out of the pit stop, so he did make up a spot. Let's go ahead and talk with uh, a rookie, Connor Harrington. Connor, your day is over. Yeah. Um... A little bit unfortunate. The uh, the number forty four Oakley uh, machine was was running pretty good. Um, traffic is just traffic is so tough out there. Um, the tires really only lasted maybe five ten laps, and then you were pretty much at the mercy of the arrow push for the rest of your stint. Yeah, what we saw from some guys who stayed out long. I don't know how they would have raced back in the pack, but I think if they were up front, they were okay. So. Uh... Where is the, does the passing is trying to get underneath? Is that the, the way to make the pass? Really, I think it's as it, as the run goes on and as the night goes on, as the, as the track rubbers in, you're going to have to actually fight for that top lane. The top lane is really the only lane where you're going to be able to get a pass unless it's uh, like the first lap on new tires. And that's other than that, you're going to be running the top lane for most of the night trying to get by everybody. Well, welcome to the series. You have been exciting. You've been quick. You just haven't quite got the results you're looking for yet, but they're coming, buddy, so we'll see you down the road. Yep. Cheers. Thanks, guys, and uh, thanks to everybody at Lionheart. It's uh, great to be here, and uh, looking forward to uh, to uh, the next race in Montreal. All right. Go ahead and talk to uh, Brian. It's not easy bringing Greenlee. Brian, your day ended early. A little contact? Yes, sir, it did. How's the track feel? It's, it's real. I, I blame myself for all that. So if I got down there in the low zone and just lost it, it's the tracks. The track's very tough. Yes, it's, it's tough, I can imagine. Well, Brian, sorry, we were about to go green, so we're going to get you out of here. But uh, better luck next time. You've had a good season, though. Yeah, yeah, we'll see you all next time. Sorry for the loud pedal boys. Good luck to Brian Yazik. Good luck. Brian Greenley, a little disappointed in himself. All right, the lights are off the pace car. I was trying to keep track of how many times we've gone yellow. I cannot tell you. But once again, but she pulls it in. James Grahula is now your leader. Dandy Dan Garrett, Joe Branch, Stefan Larkamp, your top rookie, Chris Lanini. Yeah, Stefan's done a good job starting 11th at the fourth. He's kind of running a clean race right now, and that's uh, key in our rookie battle as uh, Justin Weaver has pitted, but he's all the way back in 16th at the moment. If you're looking for a guy with good tires, you go back to 11th position as Tyler Groff. Oh, let's look at Big Joe Hazard. Big Joe got squeezed up into the wall, making a three wide with Stouffer and Justin Weaver on the inside. 
Yeah, he goes around the outside. Just there's just no room, you know. Just uh, you know, he probably couldn't have lifted either. That would have caused another problem. Just kind of ran out of space, and unfortunately, he uh, looks like he's damaged his car pretty good. Yeah, you All see, right. You see, he just got a little bit. Just run out of room. If you're getting hungry, hang on here for a minute. We'll stay with you until they come around for pit stops, and we'll take another break. We'll see who comes in. We might see stops from some of these guys up front. They've been out there for almost 30 laps. Grahula, Garen, Branch, Larkamp, they're all on the pit same pit cycle all the way down to 10th position, Mitchell Muller. We'll see who comes in. And then we'll take a short break. You can go ahead and get to the refrigerator. If you got some Ritz crackers, a little cheese on top of a Ritz cracker would be my suggestion. The, the, the liquid cheese? No, no, no. Just a little cheese. Just a, just a slice of cheese on there. Just, not, not nobody's the coming in. The spray no, cheese. No, not that stuff. No, 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 no. And as nobody makes a pit stop, you'll have plenty of time to do it. So we'll take a short break. Go on. Make your little snap. We'll see you in a while. Welcome back to the Global Sim Racing Channel on the iRacing Esport Network. This is the Lionheart IndyCar Series, round number 19. The Skidmark 200 from New Hampshire. We are going green one more time, working lap 64. James Grahula out in front in the October pink machine. Dan Garrett in another pink car behind him. Joe Branch, Stefan Larkamp, our top rookie, and Chris Lindy be your top five. Yeah, as Connor Harrington talked about, everybody's fighting for that top groove, but the only way to make a pass is to go where he's not. So we can see Dan Garen really diving down to the bottom, getting in the mirrors of James Krula. And uh, Dan's looking pretty good right now, a little aggressive, but uh, he's not quite close enough to make that pass happen. 
Let's talk about a driver who is going north in the standings, and that is Bob Micus and that Vaughn Hansen's meat machine car. He's our spotlighted driver right now. Look at that as he is under attack from behind. You can see what he's doing, making his 60 second start tonight. Doesn't have a pole yet. He's got a win though, baby. Four top fives, a top 10, 16 of those. His first race was way back in season four, the season opener. Right now, he is in ninth position, started in 32nd. Yeah, great, great run for Bob Micah so far as he's on the outside fighting for those positions. But he's had a great run, starting, like you said, starting way back in that 36th position. But he's honestly made his way, the honest way, up to ninth. Right now, he is in a pinata full of bees. It's Ian Adams up in seventh, Hacker in eighth. Then it's Micah's. Now that there's two cars white, on the top side is Tyler Graff. And on the low side, getting past, that's Michael Goodman. With the momentum up top going around him, Mitchell Moeller. Yeah, you said it, a pinata full of bees here. These guys are trying to take everything they can on these opening laps as, uh, you know, the, the tires do wear out fairly early. Uh, Michael Goodman stuck on the inside trying to get around uh, that Mitchell Moore. Mitchell Moore, you can see how he carries that momentum and just can't quite get the pass done. The top nine cars all stayed out the last two cautions. Ninth is Bob Micah. That's how he got up there. Then you get back to the next guys who came in one caution ago. Groff leading the way there with Michael Goodman. Where are the guys on the freshest tires? Well, it's Justin Weaver. And look at that. You can see the Moby's Dickey car right underneath there making a move. As he tries to get underneath, that would be Chris Stouffer. Yeah, he's kind of pinching up Chris Stouffer using Adam Blocker as a, as a blocker. You know, no pun intended. Yeah. And uh, Justin Weaver gets that pass done. But, you know, looks like... Uh, Christopher has a little bit of speed, but he has nowhere to go, and that's brought Adam Andrew Kinsella as well to the bottom lane. Now, as I talk about that, Adam Blocker still has that momentum, and, and he's still credited with being ahead of Justin Weaver. Well, you heard in our interview, Connor Harrington talking about making hay while the sun shines, using those fresh tires and getting down low. I think that's what Weaver's doing right now. I can race this low line for a little while, then it's going to give up, but he's worked his way up into a 13th Boy, he just cannot find a hole to get up high. I'm not sure if he even wants to go up there as he tries to get underneath Moeller and the car up in front. That is Michael Goodman. Yeah, it looked like as he went by around Adam Blocker, like he wanted to move up to, 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 to take that spot, but Mitchell Moeller was there. But now he's got the move on Mitchell side by side off the corner. They got uh, basically Michael Goodman. But uh, once again, you see how that top line really carries that momentum. It's really making Justin Weaver work for it going to stay right here. This is where the action is. This is where my spidey senses are tinted, tingling. Up front, they've single file and spread out a bit. Yeah, this is definitely the battle on the track. Mitchell Moore gets a run off the corner and gets by Michael Goodman, who's brought Chris Stouffer. So we were talking about Justin Weaver making those spots. Now he's lost those two spots back. So it's just kind of a seesaw with momentum back and forth as Michael Goodman has now got that run up on Mike Mitchell Moore again. Let's go up front as I think we're going to have a pass for the lead. This is Krahula under attack. Krahula yeah. up top. The pink car is, is Garrett. Yeah, I mentioned earlier Dan Garrett's been looking really good, being really aggressive. And James has got the position uh, on the upper groove. And as they come off the corner, you can see how James has got that momentum. And you know it's really making Dan wear his tires out. And I'm sure Dan's not going to give up. He's just going to dive down. And eventually, yeah, not quite there. All right, for those who are colorblind, both those cars are pink. Trujula out of front, Garen behind. Garen with the pink and black machine. Trujula with the solid fluorescent magenta car. Ooh, getting fancy with my colors. These guys are cooking with hot fish grease right now as they are Two point seconds ahead of Joe Branch. Yeah, Joe Branch is doing his own thing. Steven Larkham and Chris Lanini having a hot battle here for fourth as well. And then just not that far behind these guys is that battle we are talking about. Um, starting with, uh, basically starts with Bob Micus, Ian Adams, all those guys just, uh, just like you said, a pinata full of bees out there. 
And we're getting a nice long run as we uh, work lap 79. Well, I think what makes that battle so exciting back there is the cars behind are a little bit faster because they have a little fresher tires. Yeah, you're right. A little fresh tires, but nowhere to go. So it's just keeping them in the game and just looking for any type of momentum where they can take an advantage and get that position. And it really looks like, you know, positions are hard to come by. So, you know, just one position is a, is a lot of work. We better go back up front again because Garen is really trying his best. Let's stay on these guys for a couple laps. I think, Dandy guy, let's go back to fourth position as we have, as we saw that pass there. That is Larkamp going around Lanini. And that's exactly what Garen is trying to do up here. Yeah, he was able to make that work eventually, but you see on screen, Dan Not just can't quite get it done. And those guys are on the same lap strategy. Top uh, four, five guys are all on the same lap strategy, working lap 49 from their last pit stop. So no advantages on the tires, just good hard work. If I remember right, when we brought up the race analysis, I believe it said a stint was 52. Now, we've been under yellow for a lot of laps, so these guys have got to be worried that unless another caution comes out, they're going to have to make a green flag pit stop. And then we're looking at another replay again. I'm always looking at Garrett underneath trying to make it work. This time he's got a half a car length out. Yeah, just a little bit at a time. Every turn, just a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. But there goes that momentum. That momentum goes with James on the outside of four as they come down that front straightaway. And once again, laps credited to James. The problem that Garen and 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 Krahul are going to have if they have to come in, this also includes Branch and Larkamp and McKenna, now all the guys in the top 10. If they come in, there's about a 20 lap difference between the guys that are going to need to pass. They're going to be several laps down for about 20 laps, hoping that it doesn't go yellow and they get caught out like what happened in Iowa. Yeah, I mean, the guy that's waiting for, hoping that will happen will be Justin Weaver. It looks like he's the first driver just working lap 30 now, but he's in 12th spot. Him and Andrew Kinsella are kind of working that uh, that long strategy as far as pitting a few more times, getting those fresher tires and opening up that pit window. A 22 lap difference between Weaver, who's now up into 11th, and all the guys ahead of him. Yeah, I'm going to say with all the yellows we had, James and Dan, those to all those guys up front probably can go. I'm going to I'm going to just go out on a on a limb here and maybe about another 10 laps safely before they have to start sweating. And then they'll have to then they'll have to sweat it for about 22 laps until the window closes for the other drivers. Yeah, the worst thing that can happen is they pit under the green, then the yellow comes in. They go a lap down, and then those guys can pit, and and, uh, and then that's the, kind of what happened in Iowa. Yep. Let's go back as, as our director has found the spot. This is Weaver. He's the guy with the freshest tires. Remember, he was dominant early. Yeah, we were watching earlier. He was really struggling to get around Go Goodman and Moeller, and now he's kind of passed those guys and more. He's also passed Ron Hacker and Bob Micah, so Justin Weaver move him up to the ninth position. You know, it's interesting to see that him and Kinsella came out of the pits together, but Kinsella has not been able to make those moves as he's stuck back in 14th position. And remember, we saw Weaver surrender that spot to Kinsella. He said, go ahead, have a catch, you take it. Right now, Weaver trying his very best to get around underneath Ian Adams. Behind him is two-car battle. That is Hacker and Micah's Goodman back there. Goodman is on the same strategy. As, uh, no, he's not. I thought he was with Weaver, but he isn't. Yeah, Justin oh. Weaver's definitely sending it into the corners, trying to get by Ian and Adam. Look at Lanini and the fluorescent blue machine. My gosh. Yeah, he's now done he a great job. That. I was going to say, he did a good job. He lost that position, but he's made up that distance up to Joe Branch. Joe Branch was running by himself for a while. And uh, Stephen Larkamp was in front of Lenini, but somehow Lenini got by him and just kind of dusted him off. So um, Chris Lenini's found a really good uh, rhythm out there. I just want to unconfuse you because uh, my partner had it right. The guys that are on are going to be able to stay off for a while. Weaver, and then it's going to be Kinsella, and then another one to watch for is Brian Yazik. They've got about 22 laps less on their tires right now. Kinsella 
Up in front, he's working 60 laps. How many did you think there, uh, Richie? Probably well, going to... I'm going to say 63 before they okay. have to start sweating it. You know, but that's just a pure guess, just considering all the yellows they had. Well, they got to be feeling good about the pace. As they are, oh my goodness, seven seconds up on Joe Branch. Oh, yeah. And, oh, here comes James Krula now. He's coming in on his yeah. own as Dan Guerin goes around again. So... Joe uh, James was not going to sweat it out and not get caught out by a yellow, hopefully. So he's coming in solo, as you see on our screen. There's Dan Garen all by himself. I wouldn't be surprised if we see Dan. Dan would be smart, I think, to come in the next lap. And uh, no reason to hang your, uh, hang your pants out there too long. And he goes against what I said, so we'll see. I'm wrong a lot of times here. Well, here comes Larkamp. But I'll tell you this, Weaver goes around... And I want to see how many laps did, uh, oh, there's our, there's a, look at this. I don't think Rahul is going to go a lap down. Can we look at the driver in 22nd position? And there comes Garen again. Yeah, Garen's now going to pit. Next guy in the lead is Joe Branch is staying out. And uh, it looks like Joe, Joe Branch has got James Krahula right behind him. So, but he's got fresh tires, so it looks like James is gonna might be able to unlap himself and um, and just kind of stay out there in that lead lap. He's, oh, here comes Joe Branch. Looks like Joe's gonna nope. Joe just doesn't have the grip and lets him go by. Yeah, the the real battle here is Krahula is now in 17th, and the guy that he was really worried about is Justin Weaver. Weaver is in third, but Krahula is still on the lead lap. And that's all part of that seven-second gap that he had picked up. That was enough to keep him ahead from being lapped about the cars. Eventually, uh, Weaver's going to get the lead here whenever he comes in. Weaver now yeah, on the Yeah, I yeah, know. That was actually a good point to be made, that building up that gap just got that little bit of space as Joe Branch is now in the pits. So on the point is Tyler Groff. And uh, we'll see uh, when he comes in, but that's going to put Justin Weaver and Andrew in the lead. See, the guy that's in jeopardy right now is uh, is Garen, as he's a lap down. Although he will get the rave around, it wouldn't be the worst thing that could happen. One lap is a lot better than two laps down. Now look at this. Can we look at uh, Weaver right now in a battle with Kinsella? And that's basically a pass for the lead. Once again, Kinsella going around. Now watch the guy on new tires. Here he comes. That's Dandy Dan Garen. I'll go around the top side. Then I'll go underneath uh, Kinsella here, and Garen wants that lap back. Yeah, this is really important for Dan to get those laps back while he has the tires, just in case anything happens. Um, but, you know, it looked like just doing that one extra lap might have hurt him, but it's he's making it up as he's going to go around the inside of Andrew. And uh, Tyler Groff, is, he's got to be coming in in the next probably three or four laps, uh, but it looks like he's holding that group up a little bit. Here goes Dan Garen right underneath both of them. And Brian Yazik's coming in. So he was on the same strategy as Kinsella and Justin. Yep. He's decided to ditch that strategy and just come in. Dan Guerin has now gotten around Tyler Groff. And uh, and he's going to be uh, uh, back on the position that he should have been. Your leader is Tyler Groff. He'll need to come in very soon. He's working lap 57 on this step. Yeah, and he's really loose off the corner. I can see him. And he's really holding those guys up. So it looks like he's slowing down. He's going to make his pit stop. So that's going to put Andrew Kinsella and Justin Weaver out on the point. And now they're working lap 47 since that last stint. So right. will those guys come in on lap 60? So let's uh, let's work this to like about another 10 more laps before uh, these guys might be thinking about coming in. So Krahula races in 12th. Garen races in 13th. I'm, they will not come in if a, if a yellow flag comes out. They will not come in. And since they're on the lead lap, they will cycle to the front. That's the difference about whether you're almost a lap down or just a lap down. It makes a big difference. The guy who's going to be left out is is like, uh, I believe it would be Degla. Yeah, I think the key point here is that James Krasula, even though he's 11th right now, he's got a really big gap 
<clears throat> on Andrew Kinsella. He's got sure almost did. the whole straightaway. And Andrew Adam Blocker is in the pits now, but that's going to allow him to, uh, if, it, if it keeps going green, that's going to allow him to pit and stay on the lead lap. So that's kind of something to watch. So your first eight drivers are all on the same strategy. We talked about Kinsella and Weaver, but that also includes Scott Johnson and Matthew Mercer. Yeah, basically, yeah, the top three guys, Kinsella, Weaver, Johnson, are all working lap 50 from their last pit stop. Matthew Mercer a little bit farther behind that. Uh -huh. uh, but... Um, you know, um, those guys are going to be, I don't know, I, I think they'd be a little worried about the, the space that James Krahul has, even though he's ninth on the track, but just the distance that he has on these guys. You know, if these guys pit, um, I don't know if they're, they're going to make that up. Your leader in a few laps is going to be, mark this down, you little soldiers of Super's Clipboard Army, Tony Shawan in fourth. He's going to be the leader in about, oh, I'm going to say... I'm going to say about four or five laps. He's got six laps less than the four cars that are, than the three cars that are in front of him, Johnson, Weaver, and Kinsella. Yeah, and they're running, uh, you know, on these old tires, they're running almost a full second slower than basically Dan Guerin is, maybe about half a second on newer tires. So, you know, the longer you go, you're losing that track position, and that becomes important as uh, we pit under green, and uh, it really kind of sorts the field out. Let's look at the driver in fifth. It's Samuel Ryman. He could be able to stay out for a little while. He may actually cycle up to second as he's getting passed by Chris Stouffer, but that's not for position Stouffer on new tires. Here they come, Sam. Michael Goodman back there. Adam Blocker, that's a battle for 18th. They go around. Yeah, those guys just pitted, so they got really fresh tires. But Samuel Sam. Ryman's, oh, Samuel's coming into the pits. He's working the same strategy as those leaders. Uh, I would probably would have stayed out and just kind of went with yep. Andrew and Justin. But uh, he's decided to have enough of those tires. And it looks like Justin Weaver has pitted. He's left Andrew all on his own out there. Scott Johnson so. in as well from third. So right now, Andrew is all by him, is lonesome. Um, we'll see how long he waits. You know, I'd, I'd probably pit this lap, seeing that everybody behind me is already pitted, but he's going to stay out. He's probably hoping for that miracle yellow that kind of screwed him at Iowa. So we'll see what happens. So he's going to stay out as long as he can. That moves Tony Shawan up into second. Shallon's got seven seconds back to George Anzaldo with Ryman peeling off earlier. When, and here comes Kinsella in. All right, so Kinsella's in, um, and the key is to really see where does James Krahula come out regular to him. So James Krahula is coming around, looks like turns four. So, man, he's going to have a lot of track position on Andrew, so... You know, that distance he pulled on, on those opening laps was really key. Shawan decided to come in as well and did not lead a lap. That turns the lead over to George Anzaldo, but unfortunately he just got passed by James Carhula, a legitimate leader. So even Anzaldo doesn't get credit for leading the lap. And with that, Anzaldo pits from second. Yeah, that's going to be put James Carhula in a really strong position as him and Dan Guerin who had that huge lead before those last round of pit stops right. and it's starting to pay off. So uh, they're all by themselves out there. James Grula does have a two second lead over Dan. So uh, James was able to get take more advantage of those fresh tires as they were nose to tail. But uh, yeah, this is interesting to see how it's playing out. Right, Richie, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, Krahula and Garen were, were close together when they when they came in. Oh, I yeah. see, but they are separated by, by, by two seconds. Yeah, they, they yeah they came in. They were nose to tail. Obviously, one came in early than the other. But um, you know, I don't know if lap traffic had anything to do with it. If you come out and you got clear laps, make time up with those those fresh tires. Ooh, boy, on the screen we got a huge hive of bees there. Uh, Sue, 
And uh, we've got to keep an eye on this because I feel a yellow coming. Yeah, what it is, it's also drivers on four or five different agendas, four or five different lengths of tires. Some guys are falling back, some guys are going forward. Yeah, I basically have Ron Hacker, Chris Stover, and Brian Yossick all fighting it out. You got Justin Weaver, who had just pitted, so he's got really fresh tires, but he's all hung up. And this is what I was talking about. You come out in a, a beehive like this, and it really kind of takes, takes the advantage away from you with those fresh tires. Goodman is back in 15th. We were looking at him. He's the last car back, and he's got good tires. Dagla is in front of him. They're a couple of laps difference. Yeah, what's this? Dagla, that yellow. And what's oh. interesting to note, as Andrew and, Kinsella came, oh, go ahead. And Ian Adams just, we might have seen that on screen, just kind of bounced it off the wall right ahead of the Dagla and Blocker. Yeah, I was gonna, what I was going to say is, uh, you know, Justin Weaver was and Andrew Kinsella were together, but Justin Weaver came in. But unfortunately, when he came out, he was right in all those cars. Andrew Kinsella stayed out, came out by himself. Andrew sitting third, Justin Weaver sitting ninth. Correct myself, Adams put it in the wall right in front of Degla and Goodman blocker just ahead of Adams. Now that's kind of settled down. Everybody's kind of found the right position. Faster cars up front. Let's look at Chris Lanini in, in 10th. He's in this mix. He's in 11th, actually, trying to get around the car in front of him in 10th. That is Ron Hacker. I apologize, it's not Lanini, sorry. It's the blue car of uh, Brian Yazik. Sorry about that, it went by color schemes and should have known better. Yazik trying to get underneath Hacker with the car behind him, Adam Blocker. Yeah, going back to our points battle, Andrew Casella is sitting in third. Adam Blocker struggling a little bit back there in that 12 spot, so that's a big difference. Also in our rookie standing, Stephen Larkamp sitting seventh. Justin Weaver not too far behind him in ninth. Up and fourth. It's a three-car train. The caboose, that's Chris Lanini. Car in the middle, Steffi, uh, I almost called him Steffi Graff. Tyler Graff. And then Joe Branch in fourth. Branch yep. leading the way. We got to give a shout out to Tyler Graff as he started 36, running fifth legitimately. Also, not too far down is Ron Hacker, started 24th, worked his way up to 10th. So those guys are having a, a really good run uh, considering where they started. So what about pit stop soup, you may ask about these guys? Well... Graf's been out there the least amount of time. He can stay the longest. The car in the middle. 21 laps on his step. Compared to 27 for Branch and about 30 for Lenny. Yeah, if you go up one position, though, to Andrew Kinsella, he's only got 11 laps, man. He's looking really good. I don't, I didn't follow him on his pit stops, but yeah, he came out strong on that position, and he's all by himself out there. Got clean air. So he's uh, basically, you know, nine seconds behind six seconds behind dan but he's also got a six second lead on joe so you know i'm gonna say andrew's probably got the strongest position as we sit right now looking at hacker in 13th Yeah, watching Adam Blocker and Michael Goodman, Ron Hacker all battling out for that position. Um, you know, it's hard to see how where everybody is because so many different pit strategies, different tire wears and stuff, but it is sorting itself out. Brian Yazik was up there a little bit farther earlier, but now he's stuck in 10th position. A lot of traffic as he's trying to go around Steven Larkamp. And uh, it looks like he's, oh, I thought he was going to make it happen, but there's that momentum on the outside line. And, uh, oh, you know, Steven had to get out of it, and Brian doing a little bit of a block pass as he comes up in front of him. The Lionheart IndyCar Series, round number 19. Coming your way on the iRacing Esports Network and the Global Sim Racing Channel. We're lurking lap number 129. Uh-oh, big crash. 
and it is Ron Hacker. This is an ugly one. Hacker gets Hacker gets loose. It involves Micas, also Pierre Knight and Degla. Four car crash. There they go side by side and oh, just a little side contact there and just really just wads up about four or five cars and I don't think anything malicious, just just kind of a recent incident. You know what this is gonna do though, Soup? This is gonna bring everybody in. Let's can we look at that one more time from Joe Canigan Flanagan if possible. I think he might have got away with this one. If you're watching at home, scoot down in your seat a little bit. Yeah, we're gonna go now. We found him. Okay, scooch down a little bit. And the action's gonna happen here if we get to it. And I'm gonna go underneath, maybe a little bit through. Sometimes you get that uh, mysterious uh, no contact as you drive right through somebody. Okay, so with that. So yeah, what I was saying is, party. you know, we have basically what uh, 58 laps left. You better pit now um, because with a couple of yellows, you can make it to the end. If you don't pit now, you definitely going to have to pit again. So yep. I think this is going to put everybody on the same pit strategy till the end. And as soon as they come out, we'll take a break. You see him coming out of there. We think all of those cars. Oh, it's going to be so close to go. They might need another yellow. Maybe somebody can stretch it. We'll find out when we come back. This is the Global Sim Racing Channel and the iRacing Esport Network. Don't go far. The Simpit is an entertainment channel dedicated to the world of simulated motorsports. The Simpit is a leader in providing the sim racing community with news, reviews, interviews, DIY pieces, and instructional videos to make sim racing a better experience for all. Check us out at thesimpit.com or go to YouTube and just search for The Simpit. Streaming cyberspace into your place via the iRacing Esports Network. Brought to you thanks to First Medical Equipment from New Hampshire Motor Speedway. Welcome back to the Global Sim Racing Channel's coverage of Round 19 of the Lionheart IndyCar Series Season 6 Championship, the Skidmark 200. And we are working lap 135. Your leader, James Crahula. Dandy Dan Garrett under attack from Andrew Kinsella for second. Joe Branch, Tyler Groff in fifth. 
Yeah, everybody's on the same tire strategy here. So this is going to be a straight out sprint race to the end if we don't get a yellow. But Dan, James Krula got a great start doing his own thing. But Dan Garrett, like he said, under attack from Andrew Kinsella. Andrew Kinsella getting really close to Dan. But Andrews needs those points, man. We're getting close to the end of the season. And uh, he lost some points last week to Adam. So he needs everything he can get as Adam's sitting back in 11th position. Yes, and interesting enough, Adam is working on uh, Stefan Larkamp right now. In that yep. rookie battle. There we go. Adam's going to try and dive it deep. He's going to try and dive it in. But does Dan? Nope, he's got the clean pass. He's got it done. And we'll see what Andrew has as far as speed goes, if he can close that gap up to uh, James Carula. Tries to close the gap to Kahula. He tries to increase the gap to the man, or actually close the gap to Blocker as well in the point standings. That is Andrew Kinsella now in second. Yeah, Adam Blocker is stuck behind Stephen Larkham. Not stuck, but he's trying to work uh, around Stefan. But he's got some uh, hot drivers right behind him with Michael Goodman, Ian Adams. Here goes uh, Adams trying to go right around the bottom lane. Stefan's got the momentum, you know, but with those fresh tires, I think you're just able to just drive it in just that much harder. Ooh, washes up, though. Doesn't able to get Oh, right behind him. Big spin. It's going to bring out a yellow. That was Flanagan and Ian Adams got together. This might be the yellow that everyone needs to come in right now to guarantee they can get there, or maybe this is the yellow that guarantees they don't need to come in. Yeah, it's a tough call. You know, it's a little bit early as you're watching the replay of this wreck as Joe Flanagan goes in the corner and just gets a little bit of understeer. And you know what? He's kind of still on the gas there. He probably maybe could have lifted a little bit more. But, uh, you know, it's just the way it happens sometimes, racing for the same spot. You know, nobody's fault, just racing the incident. But like I was saying, um, it's a little early in that run um, to take that chance because if you come in and nobody else does, and then you're in a world of hurt. So it's kind of a gamble. Um, myself, I'd probably stay out. But I've been, I've, I've lost many races by doing that. Well, they did. We don't think they had enough fuel to get there if it ran green all the way. So this yellow should allow guys to stay out. But look at this. Krahula's going to come in. Kinsella comes in. <laughs> Garen says Dan no. Doesn't. So Darren, it looks like Garen and Yazik stay out for and Branch. Is that Branch as well? Yep. And uh, so we got just kind of a mixed bag here. Garen is saying, give me clean air in front of me and I'll be fast enough no matter how old my tires are. Yeah, well, we have seen that the passing is tough to go. If you can hold that outside lane try to make people go underneath you. It was really hard to get that pass done. And, and Dan Karen has had a good car tonight. So um, he might have made this, you know, it's just a feel sometimes. You feel good on used tires, stay out. So it's Krahula that's going to come out in fourth with the freshest of tires, but not all that much fresher than the guys in front of him. Uh, it's about ten, 10 laps. So what's going on here is I'd like to talk about one of our sponsors, and that is uh, the guys at HPP. They are giving away. I'll tell you what they're giving away. They're giving away. This one is giving away a wheel for this series valued at just under $1,500 to the series champion. It has SLI Pro Display, 12-position rotary for display, Momentary push buttons, two-way toggle switches, rotary and quarters with tactile feedback, integrated paddle shifters. You want it. It's got it. HPP hydraulic pedals and their accessories set the standard for simulation racing. Visit hppsimulations.com to check it out. HPP, designed to go fast, built to last. And you need both of those things if you're going to be a successful sim racer. So one thing I want to point out here is that, uh, you know, so James Krahula, Andrew Kinsella pitted. And uh, you know what? They only, they came out in fourth and fifth, so they really didn't lose that much. So uh, they're in a really good spot. 
it's going to really be up to the defensive driving of Garen, Branch, and Yazik to, to keep those guys behind him. Yeah, Garen's best friends right now are Branch and Yazik, the cushion between the guys who are coming. Now, in the mix, in 23rd position, sitting fourth in line is Bob Micas, our spotlighted driver in the Von Hansen's meat machine. He's in 23rd. First car, one lap down, and he's just kind of stuck in there right now. Yeah, it's not a good position to be in when you know you're you're not in that fight, but you're you're there. So uh, you can't uh, just lift and let everybody go by because then you create more of a problem. So Bob Micas has just got to just run his race and make those guys work it. The lights are off the pace car, so it will be pulling in this time. And I'm not going to say it, Jeff. With 47 laps to go, it's too early to start to go dancing. We're going to wait a bit. Dan Guerin, working lap number 145. 46 to go. We think he's good on fuel. Joe Branch. Brian Yossip goes second and third. We think they're good as well. Their tires are a little older. Next in line is Bob Micas. He's at 23rd, but then you get to the guys that are gonna challenge. Krahula, Kinsella, and Weaver. They've been fast all race. They certainly have the speed to get a win. Yeah, and so far they haven't really been able to do anything about Bob Micas. You know, take Brian Yossip, he's it was kind of a smart move for him. Um, you know, some, he looked like he was struggling to get that track position. Oh, Pierre Knighton Daigle. Oh, he spins it onto the onto the trunder, and I, I thought he blinked away there for a minute. He keeps it rolling. Got it into the New Hampshire alfalfa, but then he kept it going, and he's back out on the track. Whee! Come back live, and Pierre actually did have to come in. Yeah, right now, Dan Guerin's gapping Joe Branch a little bit, so he's got a good, healthy gap right behind him, Branch and Yazik. Looks like Micas was kind of challenging Yazik you know, yeah. for the position, even though it's not position, but it's track position. And uh, I'm still surprised that uh, Justin Weaver, he's gotten by Andrew Kinsella. Um, but they haven't been able to make much move on Brian on uh, Bob Micas yet as this uh, pack tightens up a little bit. Well, Justin Weaver made a dive down underneath there to try to get to, to get underneath Grahula. And now Weaver finally gets around Micas. He's going to bring have a catch with him. And Sulla back there cannot find a place as there's two cars in front of him. The fluorescent blue machine of Chris Lanini getting into the fun now. We ride on board with Kinsella. That's Micas, the Von Hansen meat machine. Yeah, and Andrew has to be careful not to get frustrated. He's got really him. racing. Oh, Bob Micas got out, just got out of the way that time. So it's brought the battle nose to tail between uh, Justin Weaver and Andrew, Andrew Kinsella. As Kinsella goes to the inside, but can't quite get the pass done. So these three guys, Krahula, Weaver, and Kinsella, and everybody behind them are 10 laps shorter on tires than the top three. Lanini gets through as well. Joe Branch is the cork in the bottle right now. As somebody needs to charge Dan Garrett's credit card for mini car incidentals, he has checked out one and a half seconds up on Joe Branch. Branch being pestered by Yazik. Krahula in there as well. No, get Krahula and then work it up on the top side. That is Weaver's going to get the pass made up high. All this battling is helping out Dan Garen quite a bit. He's looking and he's liking what he sees back there. So it's just kind of clearing out the, the space between him and Joe Branch. But that battle is strong behind those guys. Oh! Krahula got really loose. I thought he was heading into the wall, but he keeps it going straight. He's going to lose momentum. He loses the spot to Kinsella. Fights back up with the momentum on the top side. Yeah. Chris Lanini had a view of that one. Oh, that big correction there. He's steering right to go left, and that's not always good in an Indy car. I'll just point out Stouffer in eighth. Tyler Graf has fallen back to ninth. Brian Yazik now all over the back of Joe Branch, which is letting Dan Guerin get that 1.7 second gap as he has now. So Joe and uh, Joe and Brian doing a good job holding off those guys behind him with the newer tires, but 
Boy, this is a long ways to go to, to, to run that close. Great momentum from Krahula. He goes around the top side. Gets around the Moby Sticky Machine of Justin Weaver. Weaver fights back. Yeah, great racing back here for these positions going side by side. Here goes Brian Yazik. Going to send it into the inside on turn three. Can't quite get it done, but he's bringing Justin oh Weaver. Oh, my. Wow. Couldn't, he couldn't get any closer than that. Yazik wants that spot bad, but there's no momentum on the low side. The Texaco car of Branch back out in front. Here comes the HPP car of Yazik underneath. That's going to leave the top side open to Krahula. Yeah, it looks like Brian's getting a little frustrated being held up by Joe, but Joe's doing a good thing, just holding up that outside line. Here goes Brian, but he's got to be careful because here comes James Krahula on the outside. Kinsella with a great run. Third car on the outside line, but nowhere to put the car as he gets right up on the back of Krahula. Yasek holding the inside. Are they going to go three wide? No. Oh, they are so close together. Yeah, this is great racing. Great respect for each driver. James Krahula gets a really good run. Oh, here comes Andrew Kinsella as well. Yazik lost all sorts of momentum. He falls back as Lanini makes a run. They are three wide down the front stretch. Something's got to give here. Justin Weaver on the inside. He's going to have to give a little bit, but uh, great job getting through that mess. Uh, but James Krahula is going to keep that momentum and grab that spot back. Right Weaver. now, I was oh, going to yeah. say Joe Branch is struggling. He's getting real loose off the corners, and he's really struggling with those tires at the moment. Weaver was first out of turn two, but he got passed by Krahula as they go into turn three. Meanwhile, Dan Guerin is checked out on this group. He's 2.7 seconds ahead. Guerin, Kinsella now in second. He's got clear track in front of him, clear track behind him. Let's see what Have a Catch can do. Yeah, that last lap, he was a you know a tenth of a second faster, but he's going to need a little bit more than that to catch up to Dan. Um, but he does have some clear track. Those guys have gotten back to single file, not battling as much. But here on screen, you can see how Joe, he's struggling a little bit, was running second. He's dropped back down to seventh. And uh, he's got uh, Chris Lanini trying to make the move. And uh, you know, like I say, Joe's not happy with those tires at the moment. Will we go green all the way? We'll find out. 30, 29 laps to go. The gap from Garen back to Kinsella. 2.1 seconds. Yeah, I was watching that battle, so I hope we go green because Andrew's running about three to four tenths faster than Dan at the moment, so he's going to make that gap up if we stay green. Right now, this battle we're watching on screen with Michael Goodman. Those guys are getting so close together. So uh, really great racing from these Lionheart drivers. Kula races in third, Weaver in fourth. Both of those drivers with the pace to win this. This is not one of those races where you can say, oh, well, this guy's the class in the field. It has been very competitive for many drivers. Go ahead, Rich. Uh, I was going to say, just still that gap is coming down. It's now down to 1.7 seconds, and he's still, you know, Andrew's doing 22 eights pretty consistently, and Dan gets up in the 23 ones. So I don't know if Dan's starting to watch that uh, relative number, but it, that gap is closing. Remember, there's a little bit older tires for Garen. Not much, about 10 laps. Yeah, 10 laps exactly, but go back to our battle for the championship. Andrew's running really strong in second position. Meanwhile, Adam is a uh, blocker, is stuck back there in that 12th. He has not made any moves since that last time we pitted. A rookie battle, Justin Weaver running fourth. Stefan Larkamp stuck back in 11th. So uh, this is going to change those points battles a little bit if we keep in this position. Interesting enough, if we could look at Larkamp in 11th, these are two guys. Here's Larkamp, your rookie leader, being passed by Adam Blocker, your points leader. 
Yeah, those both guys. Both of those drivers are going to lose ground. Yeah, they're both going to lose ground. And, um, you know, it's kind of setting in. If I was Adam, it's kind of a little bit of a panic as you see those laps counting down. We only have, what, uh, 22 laps left. And he's not really fast enough to get there. Our gap to the front is now down to 1.3 seconds. Oh, he is coming, and he's coming quickly. And we're talking about Andrew Kinsella. But like my dad always said, he's got to milk the rooster. The hardest part starts after you catch it. And right oh. now, Dan Guerin is not going to give up any rooster milk. Yeah, that's no joke. I mean, when they get there, everybody's going to have pretty used tires. You know, even though uh, he's got 10 laps er newer tires, he's still going to have quite a few laps on him. So um, one thing, Andrew, he's getting there, but he's also bringing with him James Grisula and James uh, Justin Weaver, too. Heard about Connor Harrington talking about it, how the high side you're going to have to fight for. Grisula up there right now guarding the outside like a park ranger. He will not let Weaver go around the top. He's going to make Weaver go underneath. Yeah, and I expect Dan Guerin to do the same because Andrew's going to get there whether he likes it or not. He's less than a second, so he's starting to pick up the draft, so he's just going to get there even quicker. Ask for fifth right now, and here's a guy trying to go underneath. This is Chris Stouffer. He's going to show you how to do it as he works on Brian Yazik. But again, nothing. He can't make it stick, and he's got to give it up. Yeah, it looks back. like it. Yeah, when we get to these older tires, that top line is key. But, you know, you can see how uh, Chris Stouffer is able to just carry the momentum, momentum into the corner. And he's just got to keep chipping away out of it. But Brian's tough, man. He's not going to give that up for anything. I think that's what we're going to be looking at here pretty soon as it's down to eight-tenths of a second. 18 laps to go. It's time to say it. Put on your boogie shoes. Get that mirrored ball spinning. It's time to race to the checkered flag. Dan Guerin up in front. Kinsella gaining on him. Seven tenths of the second at the line. Yeah, Andrew's catching up, but he's slowing down a little bit as he picks up that arrow wash, so it's getting a little bit tougher, but um, I think we're shaping up to a great finish as we got the top four all kind of closing in, although Andrew's gapped James a little bit. But you can see how he's running that high line, trying to get that clean air on those front wings. And as he gets closer, watching his lap times, he's slowed down. Dan has not slowed down, but Andrew has slowed down just a little bit, so it's getting a little tougher. Well, boys and girls, it can be done as Chris Stouffer was able to get under Brian Yasek. So that is what Kinsella is going to try to do on Garrett. Stouffer now up into fifth. Look at the battle for third. in the Moby Dickies machine. Oh, over the tail of James Grahula. Moby Dickies gets a run out of the corner, and of course I'm talking about Justin Weaver. Down into three. Yeah, they've been running side by side for a while, and you can see how it's kind of closed up to those guys in front. You know, Andrew's gotten within three tenths of a second. Now he's looking to the inside as Jan Dan has taken the outside. Anything can get clear air on those front wings to get that front grip. Those guys better be careful because Chris Stouffer's coming. He doesn't have enough to get to the lead, but he does maybe have enough to get to a podium. Meanwhile, up in front, well, have a catch. That's made the catch. He's there now. What can he do with him? Well, you've mentioned it many times before. Getting there is one thing, but passing them is another. But look at James Grahula now. Wow. He's got right on the back of Andrew. So this has now been uh, become a group of four. Well, I guess it might be harder for Garrett to fend off two. They can come on both sides. Yeah. 12 to this, go. At the same time, Andrew now has to worry about somebody behind him, not just worrying about in front. So... Um, you know, that could be uh, Dan's friend. Based on what I've seen happening back there with Kinsella and Krahula and Weaver all now in the mix, you got to figure Garrett's car is going away from him. Dan's been running pretty consistently, 23 ones, and then these guys have caught up, and now they're all running 23 ones. So they've kind of caught up, and now they're running his pace. 
And we're, we're going to see if they have anything for him. It, it doesn't look like it at the moment, but uh, you never know as we're going almost. Uh, everybody's fanning out, trying to get that clean air on those wings. Kinsella cannot wait to make this move, or he's going to find out that Krahula has visions of wins too. And if Krahula gets up there battling for second, that's going to be the best new Dan Garrett could have as they come across the line. Chad to go. Yeah, and Andrew's got to worry about the championship as these other two, three guys really aren't. So he has to kind of keep that in mind as well. Krahula makes the mistake. He surrenders the position to well, the that... Moby Dickey machine of Justin Weaver. And that was a chop job right there by Justin Weaver. He didn't wait for his spotter to clear him. He just took it. And here he goes. He's going to look. He's going to go from fourth to second, possibly, as he's looking really aggressively on the inside of Andrew. And Andrew's going to block him down. Oh. Ooh. And you see that arrow wash come up and almost push James Rahul in the wall. So Andrew was done with that. He's going to focus on the car in front of him now. Weaver loses position as he falls back to third. That gives Kinsella a little bit of a break as they come across the line, seven to go. Yeah, and he's got a good run on him coming out of that front straight away, but James moves up, take that air off the front wing, kind of kill his momentum. And basically, Andrew's got to just play chess with him, and he's got to make a move where Jay, where uh, Dan is not. Rahula gets around Weaver, up into third. Weaver fighting back. That battle for third is making it a two-car battle up front. Six to go. It is still Garen. Kinsella now finds an opportunity. He takes it down deep. Can he make it stick? It does not. And going back to what you said earlier, Soup, here comes Chris Stouffer. But here goes Andrew Kinsella going on the inside, but all this battling. Ooh! They, cut. they did touch a little bit. That was as close as you can get. So uh, a little respect for each other, but that's going to open the door for uh, for James Krahula, but not quite there. But, that man, that was close. Krahula dived it in there but could not make it work. Kinsella's got to catch his breath and try at him one more time. He's going to run out of time. Krahula is up on the top line. That's where the momentum is. Justin Weaver in the fourth position, has nowhere to put it. Yeah, Andrew has no uh, no option but to be aggressive because if he takes it easy, he's gonna get passed by two more cars. So thinking of that championship, he just basically has to go for the win. Otherwise, if he goes soft, he's gonna lose two more positions. But these guys are coming right up and not having a problem attacking him for that second position. Weaver had third position for a while, but he will have fourth at the line. Three to go. Dan Garrett now with about a four car length run. Oh, a great, oh my goodness, as Krahula is really wide, might have put it in the wall. Meanwhile, Kinsella with a great run down the back stretch. Once again, it's Weaver underneath trying to get third position, cannot make it work. Two to go. Dan doing a great job. He's been under a lot of heat for about 10 laps now, 15 laps. So he's been a great job being consistent holding this line and just trying to make these guys do the hard work. They come around, this will be the white flag lap. This is one more chance into corner number one. Kinsella is too far back. Oh, uh, it looked like Nothing. James Krahula clipped the wall too, coming off, got squeezed off by Andrew. But here we come. Kinsella's got to think big picture as he raises in second. Garen into corner three, smooth as blended whiskey. Out of three. Nothing between him and the checkered flag. Give it to Garen. Kinsella gets second. Verhula and Weaver go third, uh, third and fourth with Chris Stouffer getting fifth. Yeah, that was a great finish. Great battling. They continue to battle as they come across for the, for the final positions. Graf, Yazik, Lenini. Oh, so close. Goodman and Blocker, the top 10. All within. <laughs> Spots 6 through 10, all within 5 tenths of a second. Wow, that was a great finish for those last 20 laps or so. And uh, Christopher made up that spot, made up those moves like you talked about. He was getting there. Well, the racing is over here in New Hampshire, but our broadcast is far from done. What we're going to do is take a short break, but we will be back for the Plasma Tracks Victory Rain post-race show 
where we'll talk to some of the drivers, run down the entire finishing order before we put a lock on the gate. Don't go far. You're watching the iRacing Esports Network. Streaming cyberspace into your place via the iRacing Esports Network. Welcome back to the Global Sim Racing Channel and the Plasma Tracks Victory Lane Post Race Show. If you're struggling to find something for the person who has everything, do I have the website for you? Plasma-Tracks.com not only produces original racetrack wall art, motorsports trophies, home decor, and motorsports fabrications are also available. Words cannot do justice to the uniqueness of their wares. The only way to fully appreciate their artwork is to see it for yourself. But be warned, one visit and the next thing you know, you will be trying to convince your spouse why you need a plasma track wall art hanging in your home. See it all as plasma-tracks.com. Use this promo code LRS2018 to get 25% off your order. And now I'm going to give you 100% of the HPP finishing order for the Skidmark Motorsports 200. And sure enough, it was Dandy Dan Guerin in his 100th career iRacing race. He celebrates that platinum uh, anniversary by getting the win. Andrew Kinsella, he's second in points. He's second today, but he picks up ground on his competition. James Krahula rounds out the podium. Justin Weaver and Chris Stouffer go fourth and fifth. The back half of your top 10, well, that's Tyler Groff. Boy, did he have a nice run. Up 30 spots from 36 to finish in sixth. Brian Yazik, 10th to seventh. Chris Lanini, Michael Goodman, and Adam Blocker, your point leader, comes home in 10th. Yeah, coming home 11th is Tony Schoen. Great job from 30th to 11th. Behind him, Scott Johnson. Had a little incident early on, but finishes 12th. Joe Branch, probably a little disappointed. Started second. Faded at the end of 13th. Behind him, Stefan Yotlarkamp, one of our rookie contenders down in 14th. Matthew Mercer, 15th. Mark Cohen, George Enzaldo, 16th and 17th. Samuel Ryman, 18th. Mitchell Moeller and Bob Micas round out the top 20. Joe Cadigan Flanagan could not live up to his nickname as he finishes 35 laps off the lead in the blackjack position. 
He's ahead of Ian Adams and Pierre Nyden Degla, Ron Hacker, and Dylan McKenna. McKenna in 25th. Big Joe Hazard. Ah, uh, the Candyman, Dustin Wardlow, has to settle for 27th. Connor Harrington, we talked to him. He started in 8th position. He's going to have to settle for 28th, but he'll be back. Watch for him to be fast next week. We also talked to Brian. It's not easy being Greenlee. He comes home in 29th position. Ahead of Brandon Linkeman, Brian Beard, Scott Bolster, Isaiah Cousin Dupree, Bart Workman, Jack Bogan. Uh, I'm not sure, and I don't think Peter Edwins or Robert Bluen actually went on the track. Oh, they might have. They come 36th and 37th. There's your field. All right. It is time for interviews now. And let's see who has come up to visit with us. I believe we have our race winner. I'll go ahead and take the race winner today. I'm going to roll here. Don't want to give up the microphone. Let's go ahead and talk to Dan Garen. Dan, you held on, but they were coming. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Uh, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I'm excited right now. I was not expecting this one at all. Um, I, I battled James pretty hard there early in the race. Um, and I, I kept trying and trying and trying. I just couldn't get him. I, I loved the older tires for some reason. They just working for me when I was battling with him, but I just couldn't quite get around him getting there. That last stint, I saw them pull off. Like, you know what? I'm going to gamble. I had to save another, another half lap or more. And as soon as I got out to a big enough lead there on that last stint that I, I had to pace myself a little bit more. Then I saw Andrew get around, and he started coming. And I know he pit. He had enough fuel. He had the tires, and he was coming. So I just had to try to save and go and save and go, and I saved enough almost. I ran out right before the finish line. Connor Harrington came in because uh, he went out early, talked to us in the booth. He said it's all about protecting the top line. Is that kind of how you felt there at the end? He, if he was going to get you, he was going to have to make it stick on the low side? Um, I, I was making the bottom line work pretty good. Uh -huh. He can carry more momentum around the high side and he could carry it down straight away. Cause I had to slow down so much at the bottom of the track, but I could just power out of it, but he had a longer way to go. So it was, it was one of those deals where it could go either way, but I think if he was going to pass, it would have had to been on the high side. Got it. Good to know. Hey, well, you've had... I hate to even bring it up. You've had such bad luck, but it seems so long ago. You've been on a roll. Let's keep it going. Let's close out the season on a high note. I certainly hope so. Um, and you know, what? I I don't think that we have a race next week. You might have to double check that for me. <clears throat> but uh, uh, Charlotte was my my last win, but this win is definitely going to be uh, a good one for me. Um, of course, it's my uh, my hundredth win or my hundredth race, uh -huh. and and come Tuesday is going to be one year since my mom passed away. Oh well, that's a nice touch. So, mom, this one's for you. Love you, Miss. Her name was Patty. Am I correct on that? Uh, Penny. 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 That's right. Yep, Penny. That's good. Well, she's watching. Congratulations. Nice job, Dan. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. That was really touching. I like that. Let's go ahead and see if we can talk to, uh, we'll let Richie talk to our second place driver, and that'd be Andrew Havakich. Andrew, you got a copy. I got you, Richie. Oh, man, great job. Um, you know, last week you battled hard, got up to the, the top, and then that yellow flag just kind of screwed you. This week, battled hard, got up to the top, and uh, had a chance to win, uh, but great finish. Yeah, um, I think I was on the right strategy before the, those two yellows near the end came out because um, I was I was catching Dan and James so fast there uh, under that big long uh, the long green flag run when I was able to leapfrog all those guys in the pits um, and I was looking really good and then the yellows came out and I thought I was still looking pretty good but uh, Dan was just able to to hold me off on the end there. Um, it was a real chess match for the last, I don't know, 15 or so laps. Um, but, uh, I didn't have anything else. I, I left it all as all out there. Um, couldn't find a way by him in the end, but man, I got very close a couple of times. Yeah. I mean, once you cleared those guys and were chasing Dan down, we were watching the times and you're a good three to four tenths faster than him. But it seemed like once you got within about three or four tenths of him, that you just kind of just couldn't get the clean air and had a couple of good shots. But I know uh, 
you had some guys behind you trying to take your position. So it made it a little bit tricky. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, great fighting with, uh, with James and, and, and Justin and Dan there. Um, even when uh, the three of us were trying to, to pass uh, Joe Branch there, I think I actually, I, all, all through this, this week, I've been telling everybody don't try to hit the, the apron. And then um, in order to pass Joe Branch, I had to hit the, the that first lane there, that the, almost the apron in three and four and somehow got loose, but managed to hold it steady and, and, that was the move that got me into second place and, and the move that uh, allowed me to hold off James and Justin, because I don't think if I hadn't done that, I, I don't think I would have been able to, to pass them once they got by Joe. So um, yeah, it, it was great racing with, with all three of them. It, it was definitely a pleasure to, to have that much respect for the, the guys around me. Yeah, it was great racing. Yeah. You get down to that bottom lane, it really flattens off and kind of loosens the car up and he had some close moments with Dan, but um, really great job, great respect for each other, good racing on the broadcast. He definitely got some points on uh, Adam as well, so this is going to tighten it up in uh, going into that next race. Yeah, basically, I think if we net out last week and this week, I think Adam gained five points on me. So uh, for, for all of the drama that happened last week, I'll definitely take that, and, and uh, hopefully we can keep this momentum going and uh, and – stay in this championship fight right till the end uh and i know dan dan's gonna want to stay in there too he's not far behind either of us still got a shot with the double points in the finale so yeah no it's gonna be exciting right down to the end so uh any uh, anybody you'd like to thank uh just everyone at uh at um adrenaline motorsports uh we all work together on the strategy um you, even when we we take different ones we're all working together throughout the race always communicating and uh, thanks to George uh, for putting this on and uh, HPP Simulations for putting up the fabulous prizes that we have. And uh, thanks for, to you guys at GSRC for broadcasting this. Awesome job. Well, thank you very much for that, too. You guys put on a great show, and uh, we will see you in two weeks. Thanks, Richie. See you then. It is. We are off next week, and indeed, we will be back in two weeks for that. Okay, we have a chance to talk to the man who finished in third position. That is James Grahula. James, any thought of staying out on that last uh, on that last caution and doing what Garen was doing? I didn't think <laughs> what Dan did was possible. So I, I knew, I thought if we went green to the end, there was no way on earth that he was making it and proved me wrong. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was uh, I, all you could be is just – you gotta, you gotta admit, you just got beat by a, a better, a better driver, the better strategy today, man. I don't know how he did it. That was awesome. Boy, that was some fun racing there with you four guys. Not so much Garen who was out in front, but boy, between you and and Weaver in the mix and Cancel, you guys were mixing it up. And yeah, that's what I've been saying after the race is uh, I've raced very, very hard with Dan all race. Uh, all the times that I've raced with Dan, we know that we could race each other extremely hard uh we know how to give each other just enough room i pulled a move on weaver uh that uh if he was any lesser of a driver uh, we both would have crashed <laughs> i i left him just enough room uh between uh uh <laughs> sque squeezing in there that uh if, if he made any of the times mistakes we were we were both wrecking but i was like weaver's good he'll he He'll allow me to have this spot there. Oh, you are shown on the replay where I uh, <laughs> I almost got loose and hit and took him out too. So this is uh, man, there was just so much good racing between uh, between Weaver and then Dan all race too. Uh, you know that was uh, it, it was just a fun race. I wish that New Hampshire was like this in real life where you have multiple lanes. I wish it wasn't just such a snooze fest in real life. This was fun. Yeah, preaching to the choir. They hey, congratulations! You put on a good show. Third place. Nice job. Yeah, thank you, and uh, you know, listening to Dan as well. Uh, I know he is racing for his his mom Penny. Uh, you know, this uh, this year's also been tough with uh, with my mom uh, and finding breast cancer. Uh, she's doing her last surgery to uh, to end all this uh, here in a here in a couple weeks. And so, uh, for everyone out there that's uh, that's racing for uh, for mom or family member or anyone out there uh, that's just thinking about something that's going on with. Uh, uh, not just breast cancer, just anything out there, you know, just, uh, just stay strong and, uh, you know, lo love, uh, love, love people. And, uh, let's, uh, let's 
get to come together and let's uh, let's help each other through all this stuff because there's uh, there's a lot of bad uh, <laughs> things that we got to deal with in this world, but uh, there's uh, there's way more good than uh, than any bad that could be thrown at us. So uh, let's uh, let's keep those positive lights and let's uh, let's keep going. Nothing more can be said after that. Well done, James Krahula. A nice sentiment today. Very touching here. Our thoughts and prayers with his mother and and hope for a quick recovery. Finally, we're going to talk to a guy that we just got to talk to because he had such a good run. Richie, 36 to 6 for Tyler Graff. Tyler, awesome job from 36 to 6. Uh, you got to be really happy with that. Yeah, it's not too bad for a guy that crashed twice in qualifying. So um, I burnt a little too much fuel. And uh, when I spun it on the first lap, I got anxious and kind of bend it the second time. But uh, it, it ended up working. It made me really uh, be a little bit more reserved at the beginning of the race. So, Yeah, sometimes uh, that does help. You know, you get stuck in the back and you have to just go a little bit different pace than if you're right in the middle and it worked out for you, missed all the wrecks. Um, you know, you were coming for some of those guys near the end, though. So um, great job on that top 10. So anybody you'd like to thank? Uh, I'd like to thank my team, NLR, um, Creighton for spotting for me. He, he did an absolutely fantastic job keeping me calm a couple times. And uh, to George and everybody that does everything for Lionheart, this is uh, um, an absolutely humbling place to be able to race in honor of Weldon. So it's it's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. You guys put on a wonderful show for, for everybody, for us to commentate on and to watch. So um, congratulations, 30 spots up. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in two weeks. Yeah, awesome. See you guys then. Tyler Groff, he's happy with that finish, and that was a nice interview. Hey, let's give thanks to the people that made this possible. How about First Medical Equipment? They've been the source of medical supplies and equipment in the Burlington, Iowa area for years because of their superior commitment to provide the absolute best in product quality and consumer service. Buck Kicker products add instant immersion to any game. Unlike a subwoofer that moves air and, and loses accuracy and force, Buck Kicker products move actual mass, producing a haptic immersion that's a powerful that's powerful and accurate. Buck Kicker products add that missing driver to car connection, bringing more realism and immersion to your sessions. See all the family of products at thebuckkicker.com. Use the promo code LION20 to get 20% off your next order. HPP Simulations, nothing beats the feel of a true hydraulic braking system from HPP Simulations. Designed and manufactured in the USA on state-of-the-art CNC equipment, HPP's hydraulic pedals and their accessories set the standard for simulating racing. For more information, please visit hppsimulations.com. Oh, simulation.com, no S on that one. Richie? To contact any of the sponsors you see on the screen right now, Go to the LionheartRacingSeries.com. Click on 2018 Sponsors. Read or scroll to the bottom where you can click on the company logo. On the screen now are just some of the company's equipment and software that made this broadcast possible. The iconic music that lets your ears alert your eyes. You're watching a GSRC production. Comes courtesy of Eric Eckholm and Casey L of June Lalonde. Sorry. See the screen to how to contact each of them. The Lionheart IndyCar Series returns in two weeks, Wednesday, November 7th, for the Lionheart Grand Prix of Montreal so from Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. GSRC via the iRacing eSport Network will be there to bring you all the action. We hope you join us. Sliding across your screen right now are some upcoming broadcasts, so check those out and mark them down on your calendar. If you'd like more information about GSRC, including a complete list of future broadcasts, you can find it all at uh, GlobalSimRacingChannel.com. We're also on Twitter at GSR Channel, Facebook at Global Sim Racing Channel, and Instagram at GSRC underscore Graham. And if you're not already a GSRC YouTube channel subscriber, please, you can become one by simply visiting our YouTube channel and hitting the subscribe button. Finally, on behalf of the crew, Richie, Omjet, and Dougie, I'd like to thank all of you for watching on the iRacing Esport Network, and we hope you enjoyed the broadcast. With that said, we're off to have fun storming the castle. So until next time, race clean, race hard, and we'll see you on the track.